just realised that I've been doing takes here where I've been putting it on pause when I've been talking and then hitting record when I've not been talking. So let's try this again, this time with it actually recording. I hope you're all doing well. Um, my recipe tonight or today or whenever it is you're going to be watching this is my mushroom risotto recipe. Just like my other risotto recipe, it's not difficult, it's dead easy, it's damn tasty and it's dead cheap. So that's the basics of it. Just like many of my other videos, what I'll be doing is giving you the preparatory stage, showing you how to prepare all your different ingredients etc. Because as I've explained before, I'm looking at these videos as a resource for people who were like me, who had zero kitchen experience. And this may be the first video of mine that they look into. So to make it simple, I'm going to keep this format for pretty much all my videos of preparatory stage and then we'll move on to the actual cooking stage. So if you know how to get everything prepared, know how to chop up your onions and your mushrooms etc, jump ahead onto the actual cooking stage. And let's do this. So the first thing that we require is four cloves of garlic or one frozen block of crushed garlic which I've shown you in other videos. If we're using any frozen garlic, we need to defrost it. If you can take it out early in the day, fantastic. If not, 10 to 15 seconds in your microwave should defrost it enough for cooking. We don't need the cloves entirely defrosted, just defrosted enough so that we can actually cut them up and chop them. And once our garlic is out of the freezer, if it's frozen garlic we're using, we then want to go on and we want to wash our mushrooms. I've mentioned in other videos, but I'm going to repeat it. Do not immerse your mushrooms in water. Immersing mushrooms in water, they're like sponges, they'll soak it up and that's how you end up with slimy mushrooms. So get yourself a damp cloth and then give your mushrooms a wee clean with the cloth but without immersing the cloth, without immersing the mushrooms in the water. Just keep re-soaking your cloth to take any of the dirt off it and clean the mushrooms that way. Ideally use chestnut mushrooms if you can get them, if not white mushrooms will do the job but we're looking for about 300 grams of mushrooms, slightly over, slightly under, it doesn't matter too much, but around about the 300 grams of mushrooms is what we're looking for. And we are going to require 1.2 litres of stock. You can use stock cubes if you want. I like using the OXO brand. You can use any other brand that you so wish. If you're using OXO brand, you're going to need seven cubes to make up 1.2 litres of stock. Now what I have here is a one litre jug, but I'll put all my stock cubes into the jug and as I've poured out some of the stock, I'll refill it to get the 1.2 litres, which we'll explain as we start getting to the cooking process. And now we can go back to our mushrooms because they've had a chance for any surface water to dry off them from when we've cleaned them down. First of all, we're going to half them and then we're going to slice them and after slicing, we're going to chop them. So we treat them like an onion by cutting towards the root section and then turn 90 degrees and chop. I apologise for people who are very experienced in the kitchen and I keep repeating these sort of actions. But I, as I've said before, I'm pitching at least the start of my videos towards people like I was who were very inexperienced or are still inexperienced in the kitchen. And this might be the first video they've came across. So I'm just looking to give a full demonstration of all your preparatory stuff before we go on to actually cook. So if need be, skip forward if you know exactly what you're doing in all the preparatory stages. But I'm not going to change what I'm doing because I'm doing it for a specific reason and I hope you understand that. So slice towards the root, turn 90 degrees and then chop down and that gives us nice chopped mushroom. Now, a lot of people will just slice their mushroom. I think chopping the mushroom gives a far better spread of flavour. And for those people who have got the psychological need of, I can't eat mushrooms or slimy, because I've explained already, you soak a mushroom, it goes slimy. This helps break that psychology because they're seeing a different shape than what they expect of slimy mushrooms. So hopefully that helps. But let's move on to the next stage. Next up we require one cannonball onions. Cannonball onions, as I've said on other videos, are humongous onions. They're like cannonballs. Either that or two large onions. So first thing we're looking to do is to take the top off of our onion and then we're going to de-skin it. Now with this particular onion here, most of the brown skin flaked away literally as I picked it up. But there's still a little bit of skin in the transitioning over to brown skin that needed removing. Once we've removed all that, we're going to chop it. 
So first off we cut towards the root section depending on how wide you make these cuts will determine whether you're going to have rough chopped or whether you're going to have fine chopped. The sort of distance you see me cutting here will lead to rough chopping. We then turn the onion 90 degrees and we cut perpendicular to where we were cutting. And again, how close to the edge you cut helps determine whether we're getting fine cuts or whether we're getting rough cuts. Just keep your fingers out of the way, put your grip in such a manner that you're not going to lose the fingers or the fingertips. And then all we do is chop off the end sections as we see me doing here. And once again, but from a different angle, we're going to cut towards the end. We don't want to cut through, we want to leave the fan section. Once we've cut all the way through and got all the cuts in, we need to turn 90 degrees and slice back down towards the root. Keeping your fingers tucked back out of the way in the sort of grip that you see my hand sitting at the moment. And then just pull your fingers completely out of the way and onto the tip. But be careful, you don't want to lose a fingertip. Then using your knife we're just going to set aside the chopped onion in a bowl until we need it. I use silicon liners to help cover the top, that way the fumes from the onion don't sting my eyes once they're set aside for storage. But use a cloth, use kitchen towels, use whatever you've got at hand if you don't have the silicon liners, but I'm a big fan of those liners. And then into our ramekin we're going to add two tablespoons of dried chopped chives. If you wish, you can use fresh chives if you keep your own herbs. You just won't be using as much if you're using fresh chives as they have a slightly more intense flavour. You're talking one to one and a half tablespoons of fresh chive. But for the dried, we're using the two. And into the same ramekin that already has our chives, we're going to add two teaspoons of table salt. And we then want to follow that up with our ground black pepper of which we will require half a teaspoon into the same ramekin. Now I think my pronunciation of this is correct, we're looking for three tablespoons of creme fraiche. I know my spelling's correct, but my pr pronunciation may be slightly off, but three tablespoons. And now we're going to measure out 300 grams of risotto or arborio rice, they're the same thing, just you'll see it under both names, or my preferred nickname is Absorbio Rice. I don't know why, but it's stuck in my head and I can't seem to get rid of it. Um, but it's a very absorbent rice and it's full of flavour when you add all your stuff to it. So hence why the nickname sort of stuck in my head. Now we require 50 grams of vegan butter. As I've explained on other videos, this particular butter here from Flora, you can use it exactly like dairy weight on weight and how you would use a dairy butter. There's nothing you need to do to change your recipes and that's why it's a really good vegan butter to use. If you're still using dairy, fair enough, use a dairy one. I'm not judging, use whatever one you want, but if you're going to try a vegan butter, try this. And if you did prepare your garlic earlier on in the day, it should now be defrosted. If not, as I said, 10-15 seconds in the microwave just to take the worst of the frozen aspects of it and then we're going to chop it. It doesn't need to be completely defrosted, just defrosted enough that we can actually chop the garlic. And we're looking for a rough chop, we don't need it too fine, we're not looking for a paste. Relatively large particles is absolutely fine, just break it down and chop through it. And now that all the preparatory work is out of the way, we can actually get down to cooking. So we're going to add our butter to a large sauté pan or similar non-stick pan if you don't have a sauté pan. And we're going to turn the heat on. We're looking to set our pan to medium high and when it's ready you'll see the butter beginning to bubble. And once it's got a really good bubble on it, then we can start cooking. I sort of lied in the previous statement, there is one other thing we need to do, but we can do that quickly whilst our butter's melting. We need to measure out our wine and add the water to our stock. So 150 millilitres of wine and one litre of stock to start with. We'll add more water to the stock as we use some of it up, but it's a one litre jug, so we're adding the one litre. If you have a bigger jug, go for it, add your 1.2 litre straight off. And once we've got both of those out of the way, the butter will be beginning to melt, but you'll still be probably waiting for it to get to the correct stage for cooking. As I say, what we're looking for is the butter bubbling. If the butter's not yet bubbling, the pan's not yet hot enough. You can get a slightly more intense bubbling, all the better, but we need the bubbling to start. 
and once the pan is up to temperature and you start to see the bubbling happening to the butter, it will happen in the centre of your pan first, but once you see that bubbling happening, we're going to add the onions. Listen for the sizzle to your onions. If it's not sizzling, you've added it slightly too early and wait until you hear the sizzle happening on the onions before you start counting down your timer. But we're going to cook them at medium high for five minutes and we're looking for the onions to turn a lovely golden colour at the end. As we see them now, they're gorgeous and white, slightly uh, opaque. We're looking for our translucency and we're looking for them to turn really golden by the end. And as we see here, the nature of the onions have changed. We've got that golden hue running throughout them, which means we're now ready to add our mushrooms. We want to turn the heat down to medium now, and then we add the mushrooms and we're going to cook them for three minutes at medium amongst the onions. Just make sure we give everything a good stir together once it's in the pan. And we'll be looking for these mushrooms to reduce down in size as the three minutes progresses. And as we see here, the mushrooms have reduced down. They've got richer in colour as well over the period of the three minutes, which means they're ready and we can go on and move on to the next stage. Keeping the temperature still at medium, we go and add the absorbio rice, if you remember what I like to call it. But we're going to add our risotto rice or our boreo rice. And we're going to give it a really good mix together. We're going to leave it cooking for one minute, doesn't need to be any longer, in fact you really don't want it to be any longer. So one minute with the rice whilst it's dry, mixed in with the onion and the mushroom. And when we reach the end of the minute, turn your hob up to its maximum temperature for the pan and we're going to add the white wine and we're going to cook that for one minute. It's not quite a boil off we're looking for with the wine, but we are looking to really reduce it quickly and fast into the rice and into the mixture. And as soon as our minute is over, we're going to return the heat to a medium setting and then we're going to slowly add our stock. Now, overall we need 1.2 litres of stock, so we're going to be adding 300 millilitres to start with, or there or thereabouts, but try and get it as accurate as you can. And then roughly every five minutes, we're going to add another 300 millilitres of stock. What we'll see is the stock reducing and being absorbed through the rice, but if we add too much too soon, you end up with a sloppy mess. So we add it in small stages as we go along, and it's roughly every five minutes, 300 millilitres. Now what this is left is with is a jug with 700 millilitres of stock in it. So what we need to do is add 200 millilitres back into it, take it up to the 900 millilitres, and that way, as we now cook through, we'll add another set of three 300 millilitres. And as you can hopefully see here, much of that stock has been reduced. And once it's done that, we're then going to take and add our another 300 millilitres. As I say, every five minutes, we're adding 300 to the dish. Watch it reduce, add another 300, watch it reduce, and add another 300, and watch it reduce. It does look slightly wetter as the dish progresses, that's fine. We still want some moisture content in it, but we don't want to start off straight away with dumping in the full 1.2 litres. And again, once we've saw most of that liquid reduced and absorbed, we add in one other 300 millilitres of stock and repeat over the next five minutes of stirring and watching it reduce. And now our final batch of stock can go in and again it's looking a little bit more liquidy as we get to this stage. If you need to turn your temperature up to medium high if there's still a little bit wet as we're getting closer to the end. But we're looking for another five to seven minutes of cooking now for the last batch. We want it quite creamy, we don't want it sloppy, it's judge it by eye as you go. But if you need to turn your temperature up just slightly, it's just a, a notch and reduce the temperature just to reduce it down a little bit faster on the final five to seven minutes is what it should take. And once we're at this stage, we're going to add our creme fraiche followed by our chive, salt and pepper. So add our creme fraiche and then we give it a good stir together, make sure it's all mixed in. And as soon as it's mixed in, we're adding our other ramekin with the chives, with the salt and with the pepper. But we're looking for the stage you see there, as I say, where there's a little bit of liquidy, a little bit of creaminess to it. And this just then really adds a creaminess into the dish. 
make sure you mix everything together so that you've not got any clumps of paper forming. The chives and the salt tend not to, but your paper can occasionally clump when you add it. So just a really good mix together so the flavour is spread throughout and the seasoning spreads throughout. We now want to take our pan off the heat, put a lid on it and set it aside for two minutes. By leaving it aside for two minutes, it will just allow the flavours from the chives and the salt and pepper to blend through it and intensify, but no longer than two minutes. Now, this will serve six good meals, obviously I'm only serving up to three here, so slightly off camera, I'm adding the rest to another dish. But serve it up in nice deep dinner bowls, and we're going to add lashings of Parmesan-style cheese. Lavish it across the top with really good spreading, and it adds a really nice depth of flavour to the overall dish. So there we go, one mushroom risotto. Again, as always, not particularly difficult dish, but ridiculously easy dish. A little bit of prep work, but otherwise ridiculously easy. Really, really yummy. You could make this without the white wine and add in more vegetable stock. I'd advise against it. The white wine, throughout the rest of the flavours, really picks it up and really lifts it. It's an option if you wanted to go that way. I personally don't like it that way, but it is an option. Um, I'm off to have dinner. All the best. Take care. Stay safe out there.